FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Josh Hawley's with the Beckett Fund. He's also a uh, constitutional attorney, and he is a professor at Mizzou. He was one of the attorneys involved with presenting the defense for Hobby Lobby, or to our rather arguing against uh, the Obama administration before the Supreme Court. Good afternoon to you. Big day, big victory. Congratulations. Thanks, Dana. It's great to be with you. This, um, it, although it was a little, not to like add any rain to it, four to five was a little close for me. It was, <laughs> it, was it was, you yeah. know, it was a close decision, but I tell you what, a victory is a victory. And if you read the opinion, this is a very, very solid win for religious liberty today. It is. And, you know, we're going to get into how it doesn't change the rights at all. But this, this is, was this made possible? And I want to make sure that I have this correct. Was this essentially made possible because of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, because they were saying that the government did not prove that it went about this in the least burdensome way, this mandate? Give us, enlighten me a little bit and us on this. You are exactly correct. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which Congress passed back in 1993, a Democrat Congress, I might add, signed by President Clinton, that's the law Mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court relied on today. And what that law says is, is if the government tries to force you to violate your religious beliefs, it has to have a really compelling reason, and it has to pursue that reason in a narrow way. You know, if there are other ways to do it, in other words, other ways the government can achieve its interests, then it has to use those other ways before it forces you to violate your beliefs. And what the court ruled in this case was, look, Hobby Lobby definitely qualifies uh, for protection under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. That's a big and important ruling, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, the government has other ways to deliver these four abortion-inducing drugs. Those are the only drugs that issue in this case. The government has other ways to deliver those at no cost to women. And so it should do so and not force religious objectors to violate their consciences. Exactly. And and just to clarify as well, Hobby Lobby had already provided before this even became a court case. Hobby Lobby had already provided birth control. They were specifically objecting to the abortifacients that were being mandated under Obamacare. Correct. Yeah, they they've been providing Hobby Lobby has been providing birth control to their employees and their employee health plans for years and years, well before Obamacare was passed. Hobby Lobby was providing contraceptive coverage. And, you know, there are 20 forms of contraception that are available in the United States legally. Hobby Lobby provides, pays for 16 out of those 20. So we're just talking about four drugs here, the ones that can induce an abortion. And the court said today, look, the government can provide those four drugs to women at no cost to the women who want them and at no cost to religious objectors like Hobby Lobby. So the government ought to do that and quit violating people's rights. And, you know, in other words, I, I read the opinion and basically say, look, stop wasting our time. I mean, you can do this, Obama administration. If it's so important to you, you can pay for these drugs yourself. So do it and stop burdening people of faith and wasting the time of the courts. Yeah, because women's rights remain unchanged. They haven't they were they were they haven't been changed because of this ruling. Uh, there's no right to free contraception anywhere in the constitution so for anyone to make the argument that well women's rights have been set back that's 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 a that's a false yeah absolutely you know women have had a constitutional right to contraceptive coverage uh since the 1960s according to the u.s supreme court that right has never been challenged in these cases uh it's not changed today and moreover women are still going to be able to get all 20 forms of contraception with no cost sharing, you know, no form of cost sharing under today's opinion. So in no way are uh, female employees of any of these companies burdened. And that's the key to this case. So what, what? it's not good enough for the administration, the 20 forms that are already covered, as you said, with no cost sharing. I don't understand why they're unhappy with that. Well, you know, I, I don't understand why they're unhappy either, other than that. Uh, it shows that, that Obamacare was a dramatic and drastic overreach when it comes to burning religious liberty. I mean, I think what the Supreme Court's decision really shows today is, is that the administration has been aggressive in burdening religious liberty rights when they did not need to in order to mm-hmm. accomplish the goals that they wanted. And so now the, deci- the administration has a decision to make. Are they going to continue to go after people like the Little Sisters of the Poor 
and other religious nonprofits, you know, uh, religious colleges and universities and charities, because those cases are still out there. So is the administration going to keep after those folks, or are they going to say, look, we will accommodate you, we will not force religious people to violate their consciences, we'll provide these drugs ourselves, and let's all move on. That's what they should do. They should take this decision today as an opportunity to do what they should have done in the first place. I, I cannot see how those cases, you mentioned Little Sisters of the Poor and others, I, I don't see how those cases, Josh, can go forward after today's ruling. Well, the administration, you know, they can stop those cases immediately, and they should. They should just say, look, we will right. accommodate you. We will not force you to violate your consciences. We will provide, we the government, will pay for the uh, forms of contraception that folks like Little Sisters of the Poor object to. The government will provide those so that, again, female employees can get them, and that's the end of the story. I mean, they, have the, they the right. government, have the mechanism in place to do that. And if the government were willing to pay for it itself, that would – that would take this off the table. It would satisfy. Uh, it would remove the burden on people like uh, Little Sisters of the Poor, and that would be the end of these cases. The government can do that right. today, and they should. What do you make of this news from Reuters that uh, came out shortly after the ruling was announced? Uh, it, Reuters tweeted that the White House will consider whether a president can act on his own to mitigate effect of Supreme Court contraception ruling. Your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not sure what that means, um, but I, I certainly hope it doesn't mean that the White House is contemplating another uh, executive order without input from us and contrary to the written text of the law. So we'll have to wait and see, but I, I take that language as being ominous. What, what they should be doing is, what President Obama should be doing now is living up to his many stated promises to be a conciliator and to stop dividing the country. He can do that by recognizing and accommodating the sincere religious beliefs of Americans and also providing contraceptive coverage for those who want it. So he should do that. He should be the uniter he's promised to be, and he should, he should not make threats. This is not the time to make threats after losing in a very decisive fashion today. Right, in a number of cases as well. Uh, so, so, so what is next for this? Obviously, a precedent has been set, although some individuals thought that perhaps it could have gone farther with a, you know, more of a so there, there there's some argument on the right as to whether or not this went far enough in terms of religious liberty but I, I kind of think that the justices can only decide on what is before them to decide upon well that's absolutely right you know before them in this case dana were just two companies that were family-owned companies our family-owned companies and the court said we don't have to decide anything but that question today can a family-owned company who have consistently run their business in accord with their religious convictions you know, do they deserve the protection of the law? And the answer is yes. So this was a careful opinion. I thought it was a very modest opinion. It did not reach out to decide hypotheticals in the future. That would have been improper. No need for that. Um, and precisely because it is so modest and careful, it is a truly decisive victory. So, you know, I think the precedent stands for this. If you are a religious uh, person who runs a business, uh, operates a business, you can carry your religious convictions with you into your business so long as you don't harm, hurt other people. And if the government burdens you, tries to stop you from practicing your faith mm -hmm. or moral convictions, then you can have your day in court. And that's an important precedent. Last quick question for you. So all of the cases, and this is kind of somewhat related, like for instance, the photographers in New Mexico who uh, it, they were found guilty of discrimination because their Christian beliefs uh, they said that they're, you know, they're a, a, a business. That they, they're faithful people. They run their business as a ministry, and they did not want to photograph same-sex weddings. Well, will cases like that? I mean, does that does that mean those cases, those rulings, can be overturned? Does it set a precedence for those instances as well? Most of those cases, Dana, like that one that you just mentioned, were brought under state law because they they deal with state law burdens. Uh, and the religious yeah, and I know that RFRA is different. Yeah. Yeah, only applies to only applies to the federal government. But I think the precedent that, that this sets is that, again, it, it business folks it can indeed get into court to make claims um, right. ab about their religious liberty if they feel it's been burdened in the conduct of their business. Now, how those cases will come out, you know, whether it's a kosher butcher or a halal food distributor mm -hmm. or a baker or what have you, will depend very much on the facts of the case. And, of course, there was no discrimination of any kind alleged in this case in any way. So, you know, how those cases will come out, I think, remains to be seen. They'll be decided if they're brought under the federal law, they'll be decided on the same neutral uh, RIFRA rule, Religious Freedom Restoration Act rule, which is, has the government substantially burdened your faith, and does the government have a wow. compelling interest? That's the right standard. That's a standard that protects all Americans, and it's one that the court has reaffirmed today. 
huge decision. I'm kind. Of, I, I'm still shocked that it was five to four. But after Obamacare, I'm shocked that it even it was even found in favor of Hobby Lobby. But thankfully, uh, because of people like yourself, Josh Hawley, and others uh, presenting this before the Supreme Court, they prevailed. Uh, we prevailed. Josh Hawley uh, with the Beckett Fund and uh, associate law professor, constitutional attorney. We appreciate your time today. We know you're busy. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dana. It's a pleasure. Mm-hmm. And take care.